Okay. Hey everyone, it's Greg Ivins here with Sold Out and I'm joined by Paul Morrison here. Thank you so much, Paul. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, just to kind of start things off, can you tell us a bit about yourself as a musician? You're, you're in Kingston right now, right? I am in Kingston right now, yeah. Um, uh, as a musician, I started playing piano when I was about 13. Um, uh, that was when I lived in BC. That's where I grew up. And uh, I had a lot of really good teachers in BC actually uh, like Hugh Frazier and Phil Dwyer and I, I got to meet some great jazz musicians who are still active um, and I had a lot of help from my high school band teacher uh, in, in learning piano but I didn't have really regular lessons or anything until I went to Toronto and uh, that's when I went to Humber College and I studied music there uh, at the contemporary music program in, at Humber College and then my, my parents ended up moving to Kingston, and now I, I live in Kingston, too. So, cool. Yeah, yeah that's, for, that's a pretty big trip, though, from British Columbia all the way to Kingston. Yeah, that's yeah, it's been quite, quite the journey, yeah. and it's good. I, I, you know, I really, uh, I, I, I'm really grateful to have that West Coast experience because the, the vibe is a little different between the West Coast and the East Coast as far as it, in jazz, you know, you can, you can hear. There's a different, there's a different uh, style in a lot of it that I've found, it's just uh, there's a mellower kind of style in the West Coast and a more edgy kind of style in the in the East here. Yeah. So uh, it's cool to have both perspectives. So um, talking about kind of performing and, and being a musician, uh, could you talk a bit about what your typical setup is for a show? Like you mentioned that you play with a quartet, right? Yeah, the, the CD or digital release uh, that's happening later this month, March 21st. 2018 is with a uh, that features a, a quartet uh, with trumpet piano bass and drums uh, I did a, rec a recording earlier in my career in 2011 it was actually a, a project for Humber College and that involved a sextet yeah. uh, that was with a trumpet tenor alto piano bass drums um, so there is and I've, I've performed with trios and some solo gigs so there's no usual set up for me as far as musicians and stuff uh, I like to change it up um, this recording that is coming out is different in that uh, it's it's less rigid it's as far as the music is concerned um, the way I have been writing recently is embracing a little more uh, ambiguity in things uh, at least in in relation to the music that I used to make or right. try to make or attempt, you know. Um, and uh, also, actually, it's, I guess it's worth mentioning on the same note, the production is a little bit different on this okay. newer recording. Uh, um, it's my friend Tristan Henderson, who I have another project called Casually Dating with, he mixed this album, and the whole concept was kind of to deviate intentionally from making a jazz album that is really clean and uh, the tendency at least that I've noticed for jazz albums is to be really clean and, and sound good you know that all of all this instruments you can hear everything that's going on and that's great but um, it's for me it's just almost impossible to reproduce the effect that you get from a live performance and so this the idea with this recording was to not even attempt to try to reproduce that live feeling. It was to give a completely different perspective of the music. Cool. Yeah. That's so really cool. So I left a lot of it in Tristan's hands. Uh, we worked together, so he knows my sensibilities mm -hmm. and stuff. So, uh, so he felt comfortable enough to take it on, and I, I really love what he did with the recordings there. So they might um, perturb some people if they're expecting an exact, you know, pristine kind of jazz thing. I. I'm a bit of a lo-fi um, uh, addict, I guess, mm -hmm. or if not addict, you know, a proponent. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with this upcoming digital release, uh, what, what else do you happen to have planned for the rest of the month or the, the rest of the year? Uh, so I'm doing a, a release show here in Kingston on March 23rd, and that's at a house concert. Um, uh, I'm sure you can provide a link for people to figure out. There's a Facebook event. Nice. And uh, and then I on March 25th 
I'll be playing at Cafe Resonance in Montreal. Uh, other than that, I'm looking forward to releasing another recording later this year on NYK Records, this record label that's releasing this. Uh, and that will be a solo piano uh, recording. Uh, so as, as a traveling artist, how, how would you typically say that you go about booking or organizing shows? For me, I tend to rely a lot on people that I know, contacts that I've already made. Um, school is, if school is good for one thing, it's for meeting a bunch of people, Definitely. hopefully like-minded, you know, especially when you get into higher education. So in meeting a lot of people who are also musicians, um, they have contacts with venues, or maybe I've met people who book venues and stuff like that, and promoters, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I rely a lot on people that I already know, my friends, my peers. Uh, so when it comes to booking shows, and it, it's an extension of that, I, I lately have just uh, kind of gone with the path of least resistance and went, you know, if I want to play a show, what, what's the most appropriate venue that I can find, and then how do I have any contacts for that venue? To roundabout answer your question, I guess, uh, is uh, have friends. That's that's. Definitely. That's been my approach so far. So it's kind of about like networking. You found like more I, or less. I guess so. I'm a really bad networker myself. <laughs> uh, uh, at least I think I am. You know, I'm. Uh, it's not always the first thing on my mind is to make contacts and stuff. But uh, um, maybe it's probably in there somewhere. Right. Yeah. yeah. But but that is yeah. If you if you can network and you can meet people and have friends who mm -hmm. can help you out, I've found that to be the most natural thing. So now on March the twenty fifth. You mentioned that you're performing at uh, Cafe Resonance in Montreal. Yeah. So how could our, our readers or viewers best uh, experience the show? Are there tickets at the door? or? Yeah, there's uh, yeah tickets. At, it's just a cover charge. I'm not even sure if there is a cover charge, okay. actually. I think it might be totally free. Nice. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But if there is a cover charge, it won't be much. And the place has really good food, actually. it's uh, They got, like, vegan food. Oh, cool. So, yeah, you can get, a uh, like, a, what's the best? burrito bowl those are pretty good anyways um yeah and uh yeah we'll be playing the 6 p.m set 6 p.m okay yeah, 6, 6 p.m make sure that you're there for 6 p.m it's the earlier set but uh, we'll be probably hanging out afterwards nice. so uh, anyone who's in montreal wants to come see the show come on out and, cool yeah hopefully you'll enjoy it and awesome yeah feel free to say hi afterwards and come <laughs> hang out maybe there'll be a nice couch like this yeah exactly and then <laughs> sit and watch the performance and yeah it'd be great go. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Paul, for joining me. Oh, I really welcome, appreciate man. it. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyways, I'm Greg Ivins with Sold Out. We'll catch you next time.